Hey guys, this is Slyman. Today I'm bringing you a review of the Explore Scientific David H. Levy Comet Hunter. This is a Max Zutov Newtonian. It's a six inch carbon fiber body and uh, a real killer for visual use or astrophotography. I recently reviewed the Explore Scientific Exos 2 GT equatorial mount that you can see the Comet Hunter is mounted to here. And when Explore Scientific sent me this, I asked them if they'd be willing to send me a Comet Hunter to review as well. And they agreed to do so, which is awesome, because I have a ton of experience with the Comet Hunter, and I really wanted to review it because it's a telescope that n a lot of people have, have never even heard about, or it's really not well known in the astronomy world, and it's kind of confused me because it is such an awesome telescope, and yet every person I always talk to has never heard of it, and so anytime people are looking for a, you know, wide field telescope that can use be used for planets and use two inch eyepieces and everything's great, I always re recommend the Comet Hunter and it's a uh, it's an awesome telescope that I'm super excited to to get my hands on and review for everyone and hopefully um, by the end of this video um, it will become more well known because it definitely deserves that recognition. The first thing I wanted to talk about today is the carbon fiber body that Explore Scientific put on this Max Zutov Newtonian. I love carbon fiber. It is my favorite material. Um, when I took my organic chemistry courses in college, I kind of memorized the structure of carbon fiber. I just love it. It has a high strength to weight ratio. So the, uh, the telescope, it's a lot, lot lighter without an aluminum body. By putting carbon fiber on it, you probably save six to seven pounds on a six inch telescope like this one. And being a Max Zutov Newtonian, you need to look for ways to save weight because that Max Zutov corrector lens adds a lot of weight. Putting that carbon fiber body on helps keep the weight down. So the tube comes in at about 15.4 pounds. Uh, and also carbon fiber has a low flexion ratio. And so basically what happens is while you're imaging throughout the night, uh, on an aluminum tube, you can get some focus shift and some of your images can be out of focus. Well, with carbon fiber, that doesn't really happen. And so you're, you set your focus, you lock it in, and it should stay there the rest of the night. So carbon fiber is an amazing material, but not only does it help in those ways, it looks amazing. I just, it's just, it's just a beautiful telescope. So Explore Scientific did an awesome job by picking a carbon fiber tube for this. The telescope utilizes the awesome Max Zutov Newtonian design. So it has a Max Zutov correcting lens here at the front. And then at the rear of the cell, uh, you just have your typical Newtonian layout for the rest of the telescope. But uh, the Max Zutov Newtonian is actually a really rare design. And it's pretty cool that uh, on Newtonian, you normally need a coma corrector. And with this design, it pretty much eliminates the need for a coma corrector because of this Max Zutov correcting lens. Uh, Explore Scientific did an awesome job here. It's an EMD coatings on, on the lens, and it is a rich field, Max Zutov Newtonian, meaning you get a nice wide field of view with two inch eyepieces. This telescope just provides gorgeous, gorgeous views for not only visual use, you get sparkly star clusters and open clusters, but astrophotography. Uh, if you look around what people have done on the web with this thing, um, it's really, really impressive. So either way, if you want to go hunt comets or, you know, nebulae or star clusters, galaxies, planets, it will do it all. So it's a great outreach telescope design and it's awesome for astrophotography. Another huge plus about the Max Zutov Newtonian design is the way that the telescope balances. With all the added weight of the corrector lens at the front, it tends to balance a lot more in the center than your typical Newtonian. Usually on a Newtonian, you basically have to, uh, take your mounting plate here and level it or uh, balance it all the way up at the front. And with a Mac Newt, you don't really have to do that because there's so much weight at the, the center and the back that it tends to balance very, very well. And so that's a huge plus too. And then if you have a camera on the end of your telescope, it's gonna even be more in the center. So uh, they balance really easily. And uh, I think that's a big, big plus of the design. With every advantage though, inevitably there is a disadvantage. And the disadvantage for a Max Zutov Newtonian is it is a sealed system, so it takes a while to, uh, to equalize to the surrounding temperatures. So make sure if you are going to uh, view with a Max Zutov Newtonian that you give it plenty of time to uh, equalize to the temperature at night. So I usually bring mine out a couple hours early, um, 
and that that has worked well and i've had no problems with it but if you just prepare for that um you shouldn't have any problems but if you do want to just go out and do casual viewing uh the views aren't that disturbed either when it's not in equilibrium so uh, that is a small disadvantage of the design uh, but it's one that you can live with one of the really cool things about this telescope is it was designed for outreach and david h levy dr levy that is was one of the uh, discoverers of the comet Shoemaker Levy 9 that hit Jupiter and left some impact scars. And he's been a big outreach guy. And, you know, Scott Roberts at Explore Scientific and David H. Levy came together and said, you know, let's build an awesome outreach telescope. And that they did. But the cool part about it is every time you buy one of these telescopes, they actually donate a portion of the telescope's proceeds to the Sharing the Sky Foundation. So that's really cool of them. Uh, I also just do like how that comes with this uh, metal placard that stays on there and it's kind of like one of those special edition kind of scopes that uh, is just really cool to have in your collection. Not only because of its unique design, but just because of all the, the aspects that went into designing it and also for the donation to the Sharing the Sky Foundation. Collimation of the Comet Hunter is actually really easy. The, uh, the front just screws off here and you just have to be really careful not to touch your your corrector lens here. So I just like to go nice and slow. And one more should about do it, yeah. And uh, you just have these three thumb screws, which makes it really easy. You don't, you don't really need a screwdriver or anything to, to adjust these and adjust the, uh, the secondary mirror, which is really, really nice. And so collimation is a breeze with this telescope. Explore Scientific did an awesome job on the focuser on this telescope. Uh, it's a 10 to 1 uh, focuser, so for every one turn of your big knob, your little fine focus turns uh, 10 times. And uh, they included graduations on here so that you're able to, you know, keep the same focus with focus locks on the bottom so you can lock it into place. Uh, it's a 2-inch focuser, uh, obviously, so you can use 2-inch eyepieces here like this Explore Scientific 70-degree, uh, 30-millimeter eyepiece that I have in it. And also, there is adapters to use one and a quarter inch eyepieces as well. And then these uh, extenders, uh, they unscrew so that you're able to attach a camera. So I'm not going to screw that off all the way, um, but they do un come all the way undone so you can get a camera in here for astrophotography. So uh, they, they built this for outreach, but the focuser is so good that it's easily used for astrophotography, which is awesome. And it includes those locks on the bottom. Uh, to lock your focus into place. And with the carbon fiber body, that really, really makes a big difference. The telescope does come with two finder scope mounts, so you can actually have a guide scope on here and a finder scope at the same time if you want to. So that's pretty cool that there's two of them. And one is on the rear of the telescope. This one you see right here is on the front, uh, and so they're not going to be interfering with each other at all. The Comet Hunter does not include a finder scope, uh, so if you're looking for a good one, this is a uh, Explore Scientific right angle illuminated finder and it works really really well and saves your neck a lot of aches and pains. <laughs> a carbon fiber dew shield is also included with the telescope which obviously guards against uh, any stray light that you may have and uh, prevents the formation of dew for a little bit longer. Uh, also it just makes that that carbon fiber body just stand out a lot more. It just just looks so good on the telescope. The Comet Hunter is an excellent astrophotography telescope, but what I particularly like about it is how it frames various nebulae, galaxies, and star clusters. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and opened Stellarium just to show you uh, how it does frame objects with your typical DSLR. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the atmosphere as well as the ground so that I can show you any object that I want. I'm going to go ahead and open up the oculars tab and the sensor is just a normal Canon EOS 450D so that's just your typical APS-C size sensor and then for the telescope I input the Comet Hunter and that has a focal length of 731 millimeters and a diameter of 152 millimeters which gives you an f ratio of about 4.8 that's decently fast uh, it's not crazy fast or anything but it's not slow either so it works um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you some Northern Hemisphere summertime objects because those tend to be a lot of my favorites in there like the Lagoon Nebula. So let's go ahead and see how the Comet Hunter will frame that with just a normal DSLR. So we'll zoom in on that 
and click on the frame button. And you can see that the Lagoon Nebula actually is framed really, really well. Uh, you still get a lot of the space around the edges and that provides perspective for the image. I'm not a huge fan when things are too magnified. So this is actually really perfect. And if you want to offset it a little bit, you can still pick up some of these stars up here. Uh, moving right along, if you go up to the Trifid Nebula, you get Messier 21 right here, so you can get both of those in the frame, um, as well as the Trifid Nebula. So it frames this object really well also. Uh, moving over to the Omega Nebula, get another star cluster in here if you'd like to do that. Um, this is actually one of the, the really nice nebula. Uh, it fits right in the center there, and it frames this one great as well. And then if you zoom out, you can find some other star clusters that uh, are potentially imageable. And I mean, you could get both of these in the same frame. Uh, moving right along to the wintertime objects, if you go to the Pleiades, which is Messier 45, fits this too. And so a lot of these more popular nebulae just, just are perfectly framed. And that's one thing I love about telescopes in about the 700 to 800 millimeter focal length range is the framing. They just, they just fit perfectly. So that's uh, M45. If you go down to Orion at M42, you can see it will fit Orion as well, but to fit the running man and everything, you'd have to change your camera orientation, but it would fit all of them. Uh, if you jump over just over in the sky to the Horsehead Nebula, you can see that you get the Flame Nebula. If you, uh, once again, turn the camera, you can get the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula, um, and it frames those really good too. Galaxy-wise, uh, the Cigar Galaxy and Bode's Nebula fit perfectly, and I really like this one because... Um, a lot of the times, if you take a wide field shot of this galaxy pair, you can get a lot of the, the interstellar dust in here. And uh, um, with this wide of a, a field, um, so to speak, you can get that with the Comet Hunter. So this is a great galaxy pair to image. Another great galaxy pair to image is um, the Leo triplet. And I don't think Stellarium shows the third galaxy, which is right, right about here around this star. So it easily fits all three of the Leo galaxies in there too. Uh, if you want to look at like a globular cluster like M13, not M exclamation <laughs> three, uh, jump over to that and you can crop these down if you want to. So you can you can really image uh, any nebula you want unless it's a, a super giant nebula like the Veil Nebula or something like that. So it, it frames the objects really well. It's relatively fast at f4.8 pretty much coma-free and gives you a really rich field of view with the Maxutov Newtonian. So overall, it's just a, uh, a great astrophotography telescope and frames the objects really, really well. Another advantage of using the Maxutov Newtonian design is the elimination of diffraction spikes from the stars in your images. On a normal Newtonian, incoming light must bend around the spider veins that hold up the secondary mirror, and that diffraction around the spider veins causes a spike in some of the brighter stars. Well, when you're using a Maxutov corrector lens to hold up the secondary mirror, uh, you don't get any of those diffraction spikes. And additionally, uh, to help prevent even more light dispersion and error, Explore Scientific painted the inside of the telescope a flat black, and they also baffled the primary mirror. All right, guys, well, that's my review of the David H. Levy Comet Hunter by Explore Scientific. Just a, uh, a fantastic telescope here. If you're looking for refractor-like views out of a six-inch telescope for about a fifth of the cost, this is the telescope for you. Additionally, an incredible telescope for astrophotography, no diffraction spikes, no coma with that awesome Maxu top lens at the front, and just pinpoint stars across the field of view. So no matter how you put it, this telescope is great for the cost. It's only $800 right now. They dropped the cost on it. And uh, it's, it's quite an amazing telescope and really unique too. So if you're looking to do outreach, visual use with just awesome views of clusters or nebulae or anything like that or even astrophotography it's kind of the do all telescope it will do everything and it does it all well and then couple that with a carbon fiber body keeps the weight down keeps your sharp focus overnight it's just awesome so thanks so much for watching